introductions that I think would go together to make a good short, you know, viewer's guide. Uh, just a little thing that you could scan through and watch in preparation for this movie, whether you don't keep up with the MCU and you want something so that you can have some knowledge going into the film, or if you're a diehard fan and you just need a refresher, a thorough refresher. So, without further ado, let us get into this trailer breakdown. So, first up, we start this trailer off with Sam Wilson's Captain America walking into the White House and having a conversation with uh, the old General Thunderbolt Ross in this early exchange. Uh, Sam Wilson says to Thunderbolt Ross, I have to admit, I'm still getting used to the new look, to which Thunderbolt Ross replies, well, uh, they told me that I either have to lose the mustache or I have to lose the election. Now, this right here tells us two things. Number one is that General Thunderbolt Ross is now President Thunderbolt Ross. Yes, he went up for election and he won, and that is why this scene is taking place in the White House, because this is our new POTUS, President of the United States. Uh, another thing that they tell, that this scene tells us is, uh, it's kind of Marvel doing its best to explain the recast of the character. Uh, if you are not familiar, in previous movies such as The Incredible Hulk and Captain America Civil War, General Thunderbolt Ross was portrayed by an actor by the name of William Hurt. And, uh, one of the, you know, defining characteristics of this uh, portrayal was the signature Thunderbolt Ross mustache. Uh, you could see that William Hurt had donned it in his adaptation, and it was paying good tribute to the original comic book character, who also had a hefty, who also had a hefty mustache. Um, but unfortunately, on March 13th of 2022, William Hurt passed away may rest in peace. And so, with that, Marvel, still having plans for Thunderbolt Ross, had to go and recast someone. So, uh, without, you know, spending too much time trying to explain why he looks different, obviously it's the same character, but a whole new actor is playing him, they just have this little one-off conversation where he says, I had to shave my mustache, and that is why he looks so different now. So, that is our first scene. After that, we have in scene two, uh, Ross speaking to Wilson further to discuss making Captain America an official military position. He mentions that they haven't always seen eye to eye, and in that he is referring to the events of Captain America Civil War. Uh, Captain America Civil War is a movie in which Steve Rogers and Sam Wilson are opposed to the stance of the Sokovia Awards. Um, against Iron Man and Captain, or Thunderbolt Ross. Uh, Thunderbolt Ross and Iron Man want all of the superheroes to have to register with the government and only do their, like, avenging through the government's permissions and protocols to mitigate the damage that they're doing in their uh, world-saving events, whereas Steve Rogers has a lot of bad experiences with the government with corruption and infiltration and so he is much more skeptical so him and sam wilson have already had this like clear past with general thunderbolt ross where they were not on the same team uh, so that is what is being referred to in this convo during this conversation we also get a montage of some military-esque clips and here is where we get our first look at Giancarlo Esposito's character in this film. Uh, right now, not much is known about what kind of role he is playing, aside from the fact that it looks like some sort of antagonist. Uh, and this is Giancarlo Esposito's MCU debut, so I am excited to see what Gus is going to bring to this movie. And then, coming up at number three, our third scene, that conversation continues forward with Sam asking, President Ross. So, what happens if we disagree on how Captain America could be a military force? Uh, with President Ross responding that by working together, they'll be able to show the world a better way forward. Now, this is lightly referencing the title of the new Captain 
does not look like a voluntary experimental process. Someone is definitely doing involuntary human experimentation in this facility. Uh, this quickly cuts to a scene of Sam and Dora's uh, the driving in the countryside with Dora's asking, what if it's a trap? We don't really know the context of this statement, but after that we get this scene of Sam Wilson fighting off those uh, all-black agents from earlier uh, in what looks like a courtyard. This is like a bird's eye view shot of Wilson fighting off these agents, and this is actually the first time that we've seen him in his new suit in the trailer. Uh, I believe there's a brief glimpse earlier in the trailer of uh, Sam Wilson wearing his blue-shouldered suit, and then this is the very first one of the white-shouldered suit. I might include a photo of it, but basically there have there been two different suits for Sam Wilson's Captain America. Uh, one was the one that we saw in Falcon and Winter Soldier, where it is uh, like a, the top half is white, and I think it attracts a little bit more attention. So he has one that's slightly more covert and more traditional blue, uh, blue and red, kind of like the old Captain America suit, obviously still with the wings. And so... After that, we move into our eighth sequence in the trailer, and this is one of particular interest because we see a man on the phone, uh, and we only see the back of his head and hand. Uh, by the looks of the scenery outside through the window in front of him, it looks like this man is hiding within the household that Falcon, sorry, not Falcon, Captain America um, is fighting at the courtyard is probably on the same property as this house. Um, and so, in the captions, it reads, Samuel Stearns, and if you pay close attention to the man, you'll notice that the back of his head and his hand are actually green in color. That is because this is our very first look at the leader, a villain from the Hulk comics. Um, if you're not familiar with the leader, basically, he is a doctor who is trying to help Bruce Banner develop a cure for his Hulkism. And so, in his experimentation in trying to develop a cure, uh, Dr. Samuel Stearns also accidentally gets exposed to gamma radiation, except it has a very different effect on him. In Hulk's case, it uh, creates this dual personality where anytime he gets mad, he gains a bunch of strength, it grows in size, and it becomes this big hulking being. Whereas for the leader, it causes his brain to grow to an immense size, and he uh, obtains like a superior intellect compared to other beings. And so with that, the leader goes on to start an international spy ring, where he goes to all these countries and steals their uh, scientific advancements and all their best scientific secrets. So, this is pretty significant because Marvel has not done anything with the leader since he was first teased in the 2008 Incredible Hulk movie. Uh, in that movie, we do have Samuel Stearns featured as a character, and then towards the end of the film, there is one shot of him kind of having like his brain grow, and that was seen as a throw a throwaway shot. Like, if they were going to make a sequel movie, maybe they would have touched on it, but the MCU did not do anything with it for the longest time, so it's nice to see them come back and revisit that teaser. Uh, and then in the shot, as Samuel Stearns is on the phone, we see him say, global power is shifting, you are just one of the pawns. Now we don't know who exactly he is talking to yet, but in the very next shot, we see Samuel Stearns is disguised as a photographer at the White House. He is wearing a hood. You can see the green on his hand. And he's taking a photo of the press conference in which Isaiah Bradley, Joaquin Torres, and Sam Wilson are all uh, attending the White House, probably for General Ford's speech. So, this is all good to keep in mind. Uh, probably he is the one that Sam Wilson is a figuring out is the spy in uh, General Ford's inter... Sorry, I keep saying Ford, Ross, Harrison Ford, General Ross, Thunderbolt Ross. Um, yeah, in President Ross, 
causes inner circle is the leak. Then we move into our ninth segment of this trailer where we get a few shots of what looks like a funeral service and uh, based on the attire of everyone involved, the giant American flag and these few shots of like soldiers doing a, a gun firing, it looks like someone very important to the government has passed away. Um, we don't know who exactly this is yet, but I'm sure we will find out in the film. Uh, and accompanying these shots, we also get a shot of Sam Wilson being attacked at the secret laboratory that Ham and Doris were poking around in earlier. Then, after that, we get to our tenth segment of the trailer. shots here um, and those ones I'm not going to focus on as much but we get this very important dialogue between President Ross and Sam Wilson where President Thunderbolt Ross says you may be Captain America but you are not Steve Rogers to which Captain America responds you're right I'm not now I'm gonna take a step back here and just pull up some outer information uh, and tie this to something. I don't know if this is directly the inspiration for this scene or not, but this heavily reminds me of something that happened between Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant in Michael Jordan's final season. Uh, in 2003, these two were matching up in a game, and after the game, the Wizards had won against the Lakers by one point. Jordan walked over to Kobe, and he told him, you may what is the exact quote? You can put my shoes on all you want, but you will never fill them. Now, Kobe Bryant, all throughout his career, was a huge fan of Michael Jordan. It was his childhood hero, his inspiration in terms of basketball. It modeled a lot of his game and a lot of his, uh, you know, success. He wanted to have that kind of success as a player. And at the time, he was actually wearing Michael Jordan's shoe, the Jordan 8s. So to hear something like that from your childhood idol is, I imagine, very devastating. Um, and this is basically what is, what General Thunderbolt Ross is saying to Sam Wilson. He is saying, even though you are the new ca Captain America, you cannot replicate or replace Steve Rogers. You will never be him. And uh, in taking it back to the Michael Jordan Kobe Bryant story, the part of that story that I love the most is Kobe's response to it. So it is said that in the following two weeks, Kobe Bryant went completely silent. He did not talk to any of his teammates for two weeks at practice. And then two weeks later, when the Wizards and the Lakers were matching up again, this time in Los Angeles, Kobe Bryant in the first half of the game dropped 42 points and later finished with 55 points and a victory, ultimately giving Kobe the last laugh over Jordan in the matter. And so I would like to think that they're gearing up for a similar situation in this film. They're having President Ross like rough up, ruffle up Sam Wilson's feathers, give him some opposition, some hate, and we are going to see how Sam Wilson responds. Obviously, so there's only two ways to emerge from this situation. One is he crumbles and, you know, sulks at his, the president's harsh words, or he uses it as fuel to put together, like, the performance of a lifetime as Kobe did. So, we'll see how Sam Wilson is able to respond to this criticism, this critique on him, uh, but I, I think that he will respond well. After that, we move into our 11th segment or sequence in the trailer, and this is actually happening in parallel with that same dialogue, kind of in between the shots of uh, President Ross talking to Sam Wilson. We get a few interesting images, uh, one of them, or multiple of them, being uh, the funeral site, uh, the same place where the funeral looks like it was being taken place in. Uh, you could 
see that there were lots of cherry blossoms, these pink, big trees. And here we get a shot of it being trashed. Uh, as you can see, the road is all messed up. There are cars kind of overturned. There's a lot of dirt and rubble. Uh, we see a shot of Captain America in his blue suit with the shield uh, surrounded by the same cherry blossom. So it looks like some sort of battle is going on. Uh, whether before or after the funeral, I have to imagine after the funeral. And then we also get this shot of Giancarlo Esposito, his character emptying the clip of his gun. Uh, we don't know very much about that at all. And finally, we have this image of the White House getting destroyed. Uh, it's enduring some serious damage. Looks like something has passed through it, and it is just barren its way out of it, uh, and we can't see what exactly, so some sort of unidentified flying object, you could say. With that, we get to our 12th sequence of this trailer, 12th segment, you could say, uh, where there are a few shots of Captain America and Falcon flying through the air over an ocean, and if you look closely, you'll see this, uh, like, stone rock formation behind them, and this could be Tiamat in the background. Tiamat, if you're not aware, uh, is a celestial from the movie Eternals. Um, basically, the story behind it was this celestial, his seed was planted within the earth, and he was just like fermenting, he was growing as, as if the earth was the womb. And uh, the plot of the Eternals is they basically find out that when this celestial is born, planet is going to fall apart and die. It's going to crumble as soon as he has fully emerged from it. So they have to band together and kill him before he can actually be born. And so uh, Cersei is able to prevent him from actually turning into a full celestial by turning him into stone. And it is not before he is able to actually peek out of the earth. So we have this shot of Tiamat in the Eternals are rising out of the planet, and you may see his hand and his head, um, and, yeah, that has kind of just existed in the MCU for a couple years now, and there's been no real addressing of it. I think there was some other trailer or some other movie in part of a newspaper. There was a little bit written about it, but they've never directly addressed it at all, and people have been wondering when Marvel is going to say anything about this, because obviously this is a huge event that happened on the planet, and so far all the events of the Eternals have been like completely isolated to just the Eternals, so it'll be cool to find out if that is actually Tiamat, if they're actually going to start talking about how the government has tried to explain what is this giant creature shoving its way out of the planet. And then, finally, we get to our 13th shot in the segment of the trailer. Uh, it looks like the trailer is over. We get our, um, you know, the movie title card with Marvel Studios, Captain America, Brave New World, and some, like, glitchy themes. Um, and it seems like it is going to end, but then all of a sudden, you hear this loud roar, only to be graced by one final shot of... Red Hulk catching Captain America's uh, shield and then slamming it into the concrete next to him. So, that is pretty huge. Uh, this is the first time we have gotten confirmation that Red Hulk exists in the MCU. Uh, it was a big speculation for a long time. But uh, just to give you some context on who Red Hulk is, is not just some ordinary dude that is the Hulk, but Red. No, uh, Red Hulk is a character, a villain from the Hulk comic books, and his alter ego is General Thunderbolt Ross. Um, so, not only do we have Thunderbolt Ross appearing in this movie as the president, this is basically confirmation that he is the Red Hulk, that he is going to be doing some transformations in this film. Um, and this is huge. This is absolutely giant uh, Red Hulk. He is different from regular Hulk in two main ways. Number one is he can transform at will. Uh, the Hulk is, you know, limited by only transforming when Bruce Banner is angry. When he gets angry to a certain extent, then the Hulk 
America franchise is the best in the MCU, in my opinion. Uh, when you take a look at all of the other characters and groups that have had multiple films, like sequels or even third installments, Captain America, by far and away, is the most complete and successful in each installment. The first Avenger, the Winter Soldier, and the Civil War movies, they're all phenomenal films. I think that it is easily the best trio to exist. And, yeah, I think that people will have high hopes going into the fourth movie. Obviously, they might have reduced them a little bit post Phase 3. Everything Phase 4 onwards has been not necessarily as promising. Um, and then, with that, you also have, you know, just people being skeptical of Sam Wilson's Captain America. I don't know how much of that is genuine. I don't know how much of that is just maybe racism. I don't know. But I personally am very excited, and this trailer gives me everything I need to know about the film, and I am willing to have some hopes. I have been holding back for a lot of the last few Marvel movies, and uh, sometimes I haven't been holding back, and I've been very disappointed. Like, um, promising first trailer. I honestly don't know if I need to watch any of the other trailers. This teaser did enough to get me hyped, and I have a good enough idea of what this movie is going to be out, and I am all for it. So, um, you know, hats off to Marvel. They are doing a pretty good job with these last two films. I feel like Deadpool and Wolverine has had very solid marketing, and it was a good step back and space out their projects. They were rushing too many things. I think early into phase four with like COVID, all of their projects was fun and enjoyable. Like WandaVision, Loki, when everyone was stuck at home and there was nothing to do, I enjoyed the early phase four stuff. And then after No Way Home, there was kind of this lull where a lot of them weren't really that good. Uh, Multiverse of Madness was a huge d disappointment, I feel like. Uh, so was Thor 4 outstandingly garbage. Ant-Man 3, the worst of the bunch. Um, so I'm glad that they paced themselves out. They're only giving us these, this one movie this year with Deadpool and Wolverine. Uh, Loki 2 was very good. I think that this time to work things out will be good for them. And uh, so far, I'm very excited. You know, this movie has a February 14th Valentine's Day release date. And that's kind of far in the future, but it still feels pretty close. Like, I am I'm excited. Um, and, yes, with all of this out of the way, I do want to get to that viewer guide I was talking about. Um, so if you are someone that keeps up with the MCU, or if you're someone that does not keep up with the MCU, but you're interested in watching this movie, and you just want more context, you want movies that will directly explain to you what is going on in this film. I've come up with a list of five Marvel properties that I think will be the most beneficial uh, to watch going into this movie. Obviously, there's like over 30 Marvel movies. There's like at least 10 Marvel shows. So if you're someone that doesn't, has never read the comics or does not keep up with the MCU at all, it may be harder to follow and it can be a, a tall task and feel overwhelming to try and keep up with all of it. So, to watch this movie as like a, a film that you can enjoy without having to see everything, these are my recommendations. Number one, I would say start off with the Incredible Hulk movie from 2008. Uh, this film is the introduction to the characters of General Thunderbolt Ross and to Dr. Samuel Stern. Uh, they'll be featured in the new Captain America movie, so you may as well watch this movie. That has a very big Hulk-centricness to it, you know, there's a lot, even though Hulk I don't think is in this movie, um, and I, I, honestly I hope that he's not in this movie, because they've done a horrible job with him in the last couple films, uh, She-Hulk, <laughs> and so it has a lot of Hulk elements, and I think you can gain a good amount of context on Thunderbolt Ross and Samuel Stearns by watching that first movie. Then, number two, we've got Captain America Winter Soldier. This is Captain America 2. Uh, it is the first time that we meet Sam Wilson 
as a character. So he pairs up with Steve Rogers as Captain America, and we learn about some like government distrust, and we just get to see them form this like partnership and friendship in that movie. And I think that that will be pretty important in just knowing who he is. Then at number three, I've got Captain America: Civil War. Uh, as I mentioned before, this is not the first time that Thunderbolt Ross and Sam Wilson have come in close contact. They were disputing over the Sokovia Accords back then, and so this is a logical movie to watch as a prequel to Brave New World. It's the last time that these characters interacted, and definitely will shape their dynamic and relationship um, coming into this film. Then, at number four, this is an optional one. More dedicated may want to pursue this, or yeah, I, you don't have to. But it is Avengers: Infinity War and Avengers: Endgame. Uh, these are two very big movies altogether. It comes out to like six hours of runtime. But you do have Falcon receiving the mantle of Captain America from Steve Rogers towards the end of Endgame, and that is pretty important because. If you don't know why Captain America isn't just Steve Rogers anymore, that would explain it uh, in that movie. would kind of take you through Captain America's decision on why he would want to do that and just the passing of the baton. Um, and obviously, I think that the movies make more sense together just because they're so integral to what is happening in the MCU. Everything post-MCU, like Thanos' snap and all of that occurring, uh, is just a major MCU event. So... For someone that has not watched these movies, it would be good, just for general context, to watch them, and I'm sure that, like, anything that happened in those two is probably going to be referenced in this upcoming film, just because, how can you not address it? Uh, so yeah, if you don't want to watch six hours of added movie that has, like, mostly non-Falcon, non-Captain America related material, uh, you can't skip it. I will leave a link to the, the scene that I'm talking about in the, the description of this video. You could just watch that one scene and honestly be done. You don't have to watch the two movies. Uh, whereas I, I might do it just for a refresher. I've seen them kind of recently, I think within the last year, so I don't need to, but and then coming in at number five, this is probably the most important of the entries on this viewer guide, is the Falcon and Winter Soldier TV show that uh, I mentioned earlier as well, available on Disney+. Plus. I think it's only like six or eight episodes, but it directly addresses the world post Thanos' snap. So how the government is trying to handle uh, everything that happened with these people coming back and all these factions forming and things like that, then uh, it also directly addresses the mantle being passed off to Sam Wilson, Steve Rogers giving away the title of Captain America, uh, because it's not like a smooth transition, there is a little bit of turmoil and tension over that, and there's just some figuring out to do, so I'd follow Sam Wilson's journey, and he's also accompanied by the Winter Soldier, Bucky Barnes. That is where you meet Doris, that is where you meet Isaiah Bradley, and that's all going to like directly lead into this movie. So if you don't even watch any of the other things, I think that would be probably the best thing to watch as a precursor to this. Uh, but all of these pieces together, I think it should give you all of the context that you would need. You don't need to watch the other Marvel movies, you can just watch these seven uh, pieces of Marvel production and you would know everything that you need to know to watch Captain America Brave New World. And yeah, with that we have covered everything. I've broken down the trailer, I've given you the viewer guides. Um, please let, you, let me know how you're feeling about this trailer, how you are feeling about the future of the MCU. I won't lie, I was pretty disappointed in some parts of Phase 4 and Phase 5. Um, I used to have really high hopes. I used to think the world of these movies and things like that, and then they've had a couple busts, and uh, I've had my heart broken, so I've learned to adjust and not be as hyped and excited. Uh, but there's still that old passion. Uh, every once in a while it peaks 
through and with this trailer it did invoke that out of me so we'll see we'll see hopefully they deliver um and yeah just let me know how you how you feel about videos like this i've never really tapped into uh, mcu related content i've been meaning to for a while there was just nothing that was compelling enough to talk about i think i at one point had filmed a captain marvel like review but i never ended up posting it because either i didn't care for what i was saying or uh, maybe the, the footage was ruined but really it just wasn't like it was a movie that had very little expectations going into and i didn't have a lot to say about it whereas this is something that like yeah there's a lot to say um and yeah i've i've kept up with like comic book type stuff for a long long time um spider-man being my favorite in the future, so hopefully you enjoy this, you gain something from it, learn about some references, easter eggs, or uh, just some details you may have missed. I used to watch a lot of, like, screen ranting, new rock stars, uh, Mr. Sunday movies when I was younger, uh, all those types of things, and yeah, that's kind of like what I was going for here, um, but I, we'll see, we'll see if opportunity to do more if things are really bad like I, I do prefer to build hype rather than tear down on something um it's not actually uh it depends it, this is this a time where I was hyped so I wanted to make something other times like Ant-Man definitely after watching Ant-Man I was so furious that I just talked about it for like an hour or two with my friends and I was absolutely shitting on Marvel for it um but there are definitely some very strong things like Loki 2 was amazing uh in my opinion I think that they did a great job with that and so yeah maybe after I watch uh Deadpool and Wolverine I'll have a video I could share and then I think with the DC universe I am pretty interested to see what they're gonna do uh, James Gunn does, did a very good job with the Guardians of the Galaxy series, taking some unknown characters, making them relevant, fun, and not just ruining them. Uh, like, it's humorous, but there's still a lot of emotion and action, and I think that those movies are very, very good. I also liked what he did with the Suicide Squad, um, so I have high hopes for him having, being handed the keys of the DC Universe, and yeah, once, like, Superman and this new reboot gets kicked off, I'll likely focus on that as well. I have a, I've been much more of a Marvel guy growing up, but that's... I still 